This is what I've been able to achieve so far. When is the next GitHub event? And this should trigger an MCP server I created with Tanstack Start. And there it is. So here it's gonna run the get next event command. It's gonna use uh, these tags. GitHub is probably the one that's gonna find the event. And after running this MCP server, it got the output that is this JSON. And there it is. The next GitHub event is gonna be GitHub Universe. But where did it find this data? Well, not really on the web, but more in particular, this is the service that I'm building. And there it is, GitHub Universe. So it basically asked on the database of my application about the GitHub event. But we can do even more. And the question now is gonna be, what are the next three events in my own communities? And now, who are you? Who, who am I? How it's going to find my own communities? And in this case, the same SP server I created has a different tool that is get user upcoming events. And here you see that the input is going to be limit three. And what's going to happen now is that the MCP server knows who I am and it's going to find the events that are specific to the communities I'm a member of. In this specific case, I asked for three events, but it returned only two events, and it should also be written somewhere here. Yeah, currently there are only two events for my community. But how did it find that information? If I go back on the browser and I go into the communities page, here you're gonna see that I'm actually a member of only one community that has two upcoming events. And just for reference, well, this is still dummy data, but the events are React Native EU and React Conference 2025. And if I go back on VS Code, well, those are exactly the events my MCP server retrieved. Long story short, in the previous video, I said I wanted to move my use case into an MCP server, and that's pretty much what I learned. So first of all, if you want to register an MCP server on VS Code, it's as simple as that, really. Since the server is hosted on a URL, in this case it's localhost, but later we're also gonna do the same with a hosted version publicly available. So here you set type HTTP and the URL, and that's pretty much it. You have here some commands to make sure that it is running, you can stop, restart, you have some kind of control. But in general, just make sure that it is running. And if you click here on your tools, if I type confab, you're gonna see my MCP server here. And actually, if I scroll down manually, you're gonna find that I've got the three tools, next event and get upcoming event I just shown. And the first one I created, which I highly recommend you to do the same, a really simple tool that does nothing, just make sure all the MCP setup is actually working. But since we're on a Tanstack Start application, let me show you how it works. And it is surprisingly simple, at least the basics are simple. So here, to be fair, I just told Copilot, please generate all the skeleton and the borrow plate, and then I added more stuff. But in short, since this is a simple Tanstack start application, I created inside routes slash API, you can also see here from the files, a server file route that is basically an endpoint where you can specify what to do when you get a GET request or when you get a POST request. And as simple as that, the GET request answers with the name of the server. And I just noticed now that this was the very first uh, implementation I did yesterday. No way it is this simple <laughs> was my comment message because it just worked the time function. And here is the tools. And then when you get a POST request, you do all the basic stuff you have to do with the simple MCP server. Now here, just to start simple as mentioned, I didn't use any kind of library. I just, well, Copilot just did the implementation manually. I'm sorry for that. It's 300 lines, but I'm gonna refactor that later. The whole purpose here was really just trying by myself and setting up a server. So if you already know something about MCP, you're gonna know that a server first does a step of initialization with the client, then the client can ask for the list of the tools. And here, if I open the methods, initialize just 
tells that the server exists. And if we go back, handle list tools, again, just tells, hey, yes, these are my tools and replies with the tools array. And after that, when the client fires a tools call request, you're going to execute the actual tool logic. I'm going rather quick on this video as there is a lot of things I want to show, but also let me know if you want a more detailed video on the specification of MCP. And maybe I would like to do another one where I use probably one of the most popular libraries. But with that said, if you really want to begin, as I mentioned, make sure this is set up properly, that the API matches where you set your routes. Make sure to respect the specification, but LLMs should be smart enough to basically one-shot this. And then the very first tool, as I said, you should do is as simple as possible. The less moving parts you have, the easier it is to understand what is going on. And then you can add Drizzle, you can create a database, you can add better oath, you can use all the authentication system. We're going to do that step by step. So the very first tool I did actually was just tell me the time. Now, what time is it? And the fun thing here is that Copilot is also able to tell the time. So sometimes it was just give me the straight answer. But here, okay, it recognized that in the tools that are listed here, there's also a tool that tells the current date and time. So here, since I asked what time it is, it fired this MCP server it is the function you see here. Now, we don't care about format time. In short, our LLM said, hey, I want to use the get current time tool so that it was passed here and then I can execute my logic and return my answer. If you notice, this is the actual output of the MCP tool and this is what the LLM generated after using the output as context. So here you're not directly showing what is going to be visible in the UI, but what kind of context is going to use by the LLM to generate the final answer. At least that's how the implementation is in VS Code. And once you make sure that the simple, the basic implementation work, you can do the following step and get a little bit more complicated, adding some more moving parts. And in this case is actually querying the database. Now here, as you notice, I get some tags as arguments that are the ones that I specified here in the tool definition. Sorry, just did a long jump. This is the tools array. This is the get current time. And this is where I define the get next event. Get next event takes the next upcoming event, so only one, but you can pass some tags in the, in the inputs by following the MCP spec. That's an array of strings and there's a description. So back to our function this time when the LLM is going to decide to call get next event here I do some really simple logic really I make sure that the tags are valid I do that with sod now this I'm doing kind of manually because I said I'm not using any library but if you use a popular MCB library you're going to find that it's probably going to be automatic the input validation and then from here what is this get events well it's as simple as the server function I'm already using on my application. Here I get the filter schema and then I fire the request to Drizzle. And this is exactly the same function that is fired when you go here. So I'm just reusing my API and making it available to the MCP server. With that, I can find the next upcoming event. And if the length is zero, I say there's no upcoming events for the tags I selected. Or if there's an event, the information is going to be streamed over to the LLM. But we're doing all of that by calling a local host endpoint. It's easy, right? Why not doing that on a real public and hosted application? And sure thing, we can do that. Here, I can go on confab.netlify.app, that is the hosted version on Netlify of the same application. Here, the database only has GitHub Universe as event registered. But now, if I go back on VS Code, I can replace localhost with the actual URL hosted on Netlify. And now, see, it is, it's saying start because it recognized that it is no longer the same NCP server. And if you click start here, you can also find here that it started from my local process and it connected to the MCP server. Again, it obviously found three tools as it's 
exactly the same server, but hosted. But this time, if I try to ask the same question, what is the next event? It's not gonna ask to my local NCP server, but it is now firing the request to the NCP server hosted on Netlify. And in fact, if I continue, well, there's only one event on the database. So the next upcoming event is gonna be obviously GitHub Universe. And just to prove again that this is actually working, if I get back to the localhost event, I restart the server. I, I say localhost event, I, I meant localhost server. And I create a new chat. I asked exactly the same question. What is the next event? Now I'm assuming since here, the next event is Kubernetes community days. This is going to be the answer. So let's see what happens. Again, it is working. It's going to find that there's an MCP server with the get next event function. It's going to fire the call to the next server. But now this is the local MCP server. So the next event is the one on my local database that is Kubernetes community days. But with all of that done, if I clean up the UI, I know you're also interested into the last one that is the MCP tool that uses the user taken from the MCP session. But this has even more moving part and the video is already getting quite long. So if you're interested, guess what? I recommend you to subscribe to the channel as I'm gonna make a specific video about how to handle authentication and users on an MCP server. And it's gonna need an entire video as I spent more time than I wanted. But anyway, subscribe, get ready. The next video is gonna be about what I just mentioned. Authentication, MCP server, drizzle, better roof, blah, blah, blah. Well, see you there. Bye.